As a YouTuber, a content creator, and a musician, I get asked a lot of questions. So in this week's Studio Live Today podcast, I'm going to be answering 10 of the most common questions I get asked. We're recording it live to tape while I walk around uh, the eastern suburbs of Adelaide. We're going to start here at the Paynham Oval. This is the Paynham Oval playground. And uh, we're going to kick in with question one. If you want to subscribe to the podcast, studiolivetoday.com slash podcast. Or you can just go to studiolivetoday.com for all the stuff you need. All right, I've got my list of questions here. Number one is this. <laughs> Why do you still use GarageBand? And yeah, the word still is usually used in there, or sometimes it's just, why do you use GarageBand? Because here's the thing. When I started this channel a while back now, back in 2017, 16, <laughs> um, I built it around helping people create, record, and release their best music, primarily using... GarageBand on their iPhone or iPad and I did that primarily because I just couldn't find any content <laughs> around GarageBand for people that were starting out. So very much was focused on people beginning to create music, starting out creating music and then sort of built up from there and what I get asked now is, hey, seven, eight years later, mate, why are you still using GarageBand? Why haven't you moved to Pro Tools? Why don't you use Logic Pro? I mean, it's on your hat for goodness sake. <laughs> and here's the thing. I just find that GarageBand works for me. It works for my workflow and I create better music. Now, could I get better, quote unquote, better results using something else? Possibly. But there's a learning curve there, isn't there? There's often a steep learning curve when you're learning something new. So for me, sticking with what I know for now is kind of the best option for me. And it doesn't mean I don't try other things. In fact, if you go, if you've been around the channel lately, you know that I check out Cubasis, I check out Logic Pro, I've started doing more desktop stuff. So there is definitely movement towards doing other things. They also have Your Music Live, which focuses on helping you know, promote your music. Uh, and uh, I look at gear and I look at other things as well. I look at the psychology and the motivation of things. So yeah, even though I still use GarageBand, I still love GarageBand and I will keep creating. And the other thing people say is, why are you making the same videos? you've already covered GarageBand. Well, here's the thing. Those videos are now five and six years old, and even though they still kind of hold up, I think I do a better job now. I'm more focused, I'm more to the point, and uh, that's a better thing all around. So that is why I still use GarageBand. Uh, question number two. Will you collaborate with me? Uh, probably not. Not because I'm a giant dick. I mean, the jury's out on that one. But because it can be challenging, to manage my time as a, as a content creator and a YouTuber. And I do get asked to collaborate a lot from various different people on various different forums. And unfortunately, what I learned early on doing a lot of this sort of thing is if you say yes to everything, you're not going to have enough time to be able to do everything. So you're better off... Well, that's a funky effect. Can we change that? You're better off being able to know when to say yes and know when to say no. So it doesn't mean I won't. It doesn't mean you can't ask. I'll never be mean if you say, hey, would you like to collaborate on this? But here's the key. And whether it's asking me or asking anyone else, make sure that you've got a really clear idea of what you're doing. If you just say, hey, brah, want to collab, I'm probably going to say no. But if you say, hey, I really like your vocal stylings. I've got all these stems for this great uh, folk song that I think is right up your alley. Will you spend five minutes to take a listen and uh, see if you can do something with it? Guess what? More likely to do that. Uh, so just think about before you say, hey, would you like to collab? Maybe just have a bit of a plan. You don't have to have it all mapped out, but a little bit of a plan to collaborate. Uh, here we are at the Paynham Norwood Union Football Club. So this is a Paynham Oval. This has recently been redeveloped. So they've got some nice new facilities here and they play cricket and footy in this location. Question three. All right. <laughs> Do you offer any production, mixing or mastering services? So yes. I do. I don't advertise the fact that I do because I don't have a lot of time to do a lot of it. And I don't, it's not my business, so it's not my primary business. My primary business is creating content uh, and creating videos to help people create, record and release their best music. However, uh, in the past, I have done some, some production. I've given some production advice. Uh, I've done a little bit of mixing and mastering work. I'm just going to stay over this side while the the big uh, garbage truck is over there. <laughs> so I do, I have been able to help some folks out in the past. Uh, I've done some mixing for folks that have wanted to record to backing tracks. So that was a bit of fun. And uh, yeah, if you've got 
a song and you're looking for some advice so you don't want me to do the job that's kind of what I prefer to do because I'm more of a teacher than a doer what do they say like people that teach can't do well I don't believe in that I believe that some people are actually better at helping others get the best out of what they do than necessarily doing the best things themselves or is that just an excuse that people that aren't great at things give because they're like no I'm a coach I'm a teacher I'm doing things um, there's lads over in the sheds over there it's not going to show it in there <laughs> that are watching me going what's this clown up to and by the way uh, buy all your meats at um, Campbelltown meats or if you're a veggie like me maybe don't <laughs> let's keep strolling shall we uh, question four uh, this is related will you listen to my song and give me some feedback uh, maybe so here's the thing with that it depends so I actually have a show called Your Music Live. So your best bet to get me to listen to your song and give you some feedback is to participate in Your Music Live. So we do a weekly show here on the channel. It's called Your Music Live. You can submit a song at studiolivetoday.com slash YML. And then you're pretty much guaranteed that I and other people will actually listen to your song because that's what it's all about. It's about promoting music. Uh, a lot of folks that reach out to me will say things like, ah, oh, yeah, can you just can you just listen to this or can you mix this for me? Can you master this for me? Can you spend some time? And what's a nice way of saying this without being a giant dick? Um, I don't actually have a lot of time to do a lot of things for free. I know, it does make me feel a little bit awkward to say that, but a lot of people have very high expectations of what they'll get for nothing. And I hate to break it to you, but this is my full-time gig. So being a content creator, being a music educator is my job. So it would be like uh, if you're working at McDonald's and you finish your shift and someone walks in and says, I know you're not going to get paid for this, but can you come to my place and fry up some burgers and fries for me? Um, I'm not going to give you anything for it. And I know you've been working at it and being paid for it all day, but if you could just do that same thing that you've done for other people, but do it for me and do it for free, that'd be great. And again, I know I sound like a bit of a dick, but <laughs> it's the reality. And here's the cool thing though. I, won't, I don't just say that to people. I don't just say no, blanket no to people. I'll say, there are communities. Jump into the Create, Record, Release Facebook group. Jump into uh, Reddit and jump into Discords. And there's communities galore out there where you can actually uh, get some feedback. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll pick up the camera in a second, move on. I just needed a quick rest there, my arm was getting tired from holding the camera. Uh, number five, what's the best, insert category. So the reason that I didn't say what's the best microphone, what's the best audio interface, what's the best anything, is that I get asked this question about all sorts of things. I get asked this question about audio interfaces, about mixers, about cables, about iPads, about iPhones, about Macs, about PCs. Not so much PCs these days, people know I don't use them anymore. but. I get asked this question about a lot of things, and the thing is, it depends. There is virtually never a direct answer that's going to be right for everyone in every situation. It's going to be situationally dependent, and your mileage is gonna vary. So what's the best audio interface? Well, I could say, for most people, it's probably the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, but if your budget's 50 bucks, it's gonna cost you more than that, isn't it? So you're probably gonna to have to get a Behringer or get a Presonus or something a little bit lower end. And the same thing with a mixer, I've just picked up the, um, I forget the name of it now, the Rode, Rodecaster, Rodecaster Pro 2, which is a fabulous mixer, but it's also like 700 bucks. <laughs> so if you're just starting out, you probably want a Yamaha MG series for two, three hundred dollars if you're looking for a mixer. Or maybe a mixer's not right for you at all because it's a lot more complex. Maybe you just need a single channel audio interface and that's actually going to be a lot better for you. So the answer to what is the best thing is it depends. And be really careful, be really cautious of anyone that ever tells you this is the best this thing and uh, always will be and is right for everyone because there's virtually nothing that that's going to be. Bloke blowing his leaves down there. <laughs> so we might go back this way for a bit. Uh, living in the suburbs, eh? Uh, so back there is the uh, tennis club here at Paynham Oval and uh, the Paynham Sports Association is uh, just in here. There it is, yeah. I reckon, the I reckon there's dudes that just sit there waiting for uh, YouTubers to walk past with their uh, little selfie sticks and their cameras, and then they start making noise as soon as possible. 
So yeah, uh, if you do want gear recommendations though, head over to studiolivetoday.com slash gear. That's my gear guide and I do have a lot of recommendations for you there. See, I'm walking the other way and he stops. Can I go back that way now? What do you reckon? Do we risk it? <laughs> risk it for the biscuit? Nah, he looks like he's loading up again, ready to go. We'll go this way. <laughs> question, question number uh, six. This is one that I get asked a lot and it doesn't have really anything to do with music. And it's, what's wrong with your eye? Hey brah, what's wrong with your eye? This is why you don't buy weed at the gas station. Insert comment here. No, here's the thing. 99.9% .9 of people are super kind uh, and don't even either mention it or notice it. Uh, the 10% the of people that notice it, most of them don't mention it. They're just like, oh, that dude's got a bit of a weird eye. Fair enough. <laughs> and then the few people that reach out, most of them are actually kind and actually curious. And they're like, ah, bro, what happened? And unfortunately, I don't have a funny story. I know it's not really ever going to be funny, but I don't even have a dramatic story. Um, was born with one eye. Yeah, I know. I hate to bury the lead on that one. But yeah, I was born uh, with only one eye and uh, I have a prosthetic right eye. And that's about it. I've had, uh, had a few surgeries when I was younger uh, to create an eyelid and to, to, uh, to make it look a little bit more realistic. And could I go and have a bunch more surgery now that technology's improved and uh, make it look even better? Probably. <laughs> Do I want to and is it likely that I'm going to? Probably not. Uh, the beauty part is that most of what I do is audio. And uh, for the few people, for the 1% or 0.1% of people that are like, I'm not going to watch your channel because I can't look at you, mate. Um, you know what? Plenty of other fish in the sea. Move on. Uh, you can go and check out other channels. It's all good. So no, I'm not sensitive about it. Uh, it's something I've had my entire life for 45 years now. So it's, yeah, it's past the point where I care. The reason that I don't mention it on the channel is not some big secret. It's that... I just don't think about it. It's not something that really plays on my mind. And uh, everyone that knows me, uh, they, they find it a bit funny, a bit weird for maybe the first day or maybe the first week, and then they kind of forget. And it's the same with anything with anyone. Uh, we're all just different. It's not a problem. No one's perfectly symmetrical. No one's got everything going on physically and mentally spot on all the time. So uh, yeah, diversity, mate. Diversity is the spice of life. <laughs> I didn't want to come this way because it's really sunny out this side. All right, let's go to the next question. Uh, this is, how do I overcome the fear of sharing my music? I'm going to swap hands. You're going to get a bit of a close-up while I swap hands. How do I overcome the fear of sharing music? So, this is a hard one. And uh, I'm going to tell a bit of a story here. I'm going to relate this to my daughter because she is very much like me. She's 12 years old now. And I remember me at 12 years old. I was actually a pretty good pianist. Well, piano player, I'll say, because I had a great ear for music and I could basically pick up the piano and play, not anything, but a lot of things that I just heard I could play by ear. Uh, it's pretty cool, it's a pretty good skill to have, playing by ear. Um, but I did not want to play in front of anyone. <laughs> my parents would like, I'd basically wait for my parents to be out of the house before I'd play piano. And then they'd come home and occasionally catch me in the act, I know. That's what, you, <laughs> that's what you hope to uh, catch your 12 year old boy doing uh, when he's by himself, he's playing piano. But no, uh, catch me in the act of playing. And then they'd be like, can you please play? And I'd say, no, I'm too embarrassed. And right up to, I still remember, right up to like my 18th and 21st birthdays, I was too embarrassed to let like, my dad give a speech at my birthday parties. And it was, it was just that. Uh, I grew up as a little nerd, a little uh, overweight nerd and uh, got teased quite a bit. Also had one eye, didn't help. Uh, but it didn't do the best thing for my confidence. It didn't make me feel really confident in performing in front of people because I feared judgment and I feared what they would think. Uh, flash forward to now, and I don't care really what anyone thinks, uh, hence why walking down the street talking to myself, um, just in the suburbs near where I live. So. Yeah, it is a hard thing to get past. Uh, what I would recommend, what I think works these days and what I recommend to folks and what I'm trying to help my daughter with is to start start being more comfortable, start sharing in smaller groups. So for, for music, so for her it's like, yeah, start sharing a bit more about what you do and a bit more about what you've got to say with, with your friends, your close friends, your family, uh, close groups that you're really comfortable with. 
and then branch out. Use the, the circle, circular, concentric circles. Think about your circles. Oh, I need to put my uh, phone in my pocket for this. So the way I look at it is that when you're starting out, uh, you, you, you're here, right? And what you want to do is as you branch out your circle, I can't do it with two hands, but your circle grows out. Problem is, let's just say that you're nervous about sharing your music because you know this is this is your circle and anything outside of there is too scary well if you release it publicly to the internet to the troll to the horrible trolls of the internet well they're probably going to because you know when you get to the whole world <laughs> there are some dicks out there but if you find a group if you find somewhere we can share it that's more contained that's going to work better for you so finding a trusted group and it could just be to send to one person or a group of people a friend join a community you'll soon work out who's the same sort of people as you maybe people that are producing music that's similar to you that you know are cool people that are commenting on other people's music maybe reach out to someone like that and say hey i've never shared my music before i'm too nervous can i send you a song and they probably will say yes and guess what if they say no it's not the end of the world. Uh, I know, it's a fear of rejection, it's a fear of judgment, uh, but here's, at the end of the day, what other people, especially strangers on the internet, think of you and your music, kind of 0% care factor. But I know, I get it. I feel it because I was there. So uh, just try, but start, again, just, just push the circle out a little bit. Because it's like a balloon. If you grab a balloon and you, just, you fill it with air, what's it gonna do? It's gonna pop like that learner driver there you gotta learn to drive yeah you can't just jump out on the freeway going 100 kilometers an hour you gotta do 30 k's an hour around the coles car park before you get out there so yeah do that what's my next question <laughs> i put my phone away to hand gesture well that place looks nice we've got some building work going on over there the next question uh <laughs> how do you stay motivated yeah People ask me this a lot. How do you stay motivated? How do you put out a video every day? How do you make sure that you, you show up every weekend to do your live shows? How do you make sure, how do you get on top of your emails? How do you stay motivated to do things? Yeah, a couple of tips, a couple of things I do. Uh, number one, chunk it down. <laughs> you can't boil the ocean. If you're starting to get overwhelmed, like let's just, the, the way I put it, if you're making an album, you're like man i gotta write an album which means i gotta do 12 tracks which means each track's gotta have like four verses and four choruses and then i gotta write intros and outros i gotta do the arrangement oh god then i gotta record it and track it and then i gotta mix it and then i gotta master it and then i gotta do some album artwork and then i've got to promote it uh, oh no nah, i'm just not gonna bother or <laughs> or you say today uh i'm gonna get a song idea down just gonna start and then I'm gonna write uh, an eight bar motif. Yep, cool. And then I'm gonna write down some lyric ideas. I'm gonna do some brainstorming exercises, I'll spend half an hour working on lyric ideas, great. And then I'm going to uh, write a chorus and a hook for this song, great. <laughs> so you see what I'm saying here? You chunk it down. You can't do everything at once. You can't boil the ocean. You gotta do things in steps and stages. And if you try to do it all at once, you're gonna go into overwhelm and that ain't gonna be good for you or anybody else. So trust me on this one, try and chunk it down. The other thing is to make sure that you're really clear on what your goals are. Now I know, you don't have to be a goal, I'm not a goal setter. I'm not like, this year I plan to do this, 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 check it all off, no. But I am clear on what I need to do and it could be as simple as having a statement. Yes, my statement's a bit woo woo and it's a bit wanky, but it's this. My goal is to help people create, record, and release their best music. So that means if I'm working out what to do, if there's a difference between doing a five minute video that's gonna help people with an important part of GarageBand and how to learn how to make music, or write my own song, it's pretty clear based on my goal and my mission statement that I need to do the video. So that's what helps me make sure I keep doing videos every day. And for you, you need to work out what your goals are. And here's the problem. People will say, I want to be a successful musician. The frick does that mean? <laughs> what is successful? Define success for me. Because for some people, success just means completion. Successful musician could be, I finished an album, or I wrote a whole song and recorded it, or I released my first song 
to Spotify using DistroKid, whatever it happens to be. But you know what it's not? <laughs> it's not being a multi-million dollar Grammy Award winning recording artist. Like, we can't all be Beyonce. Some of us, we can't all be Weezer. <laughs> I would love to be Weezer. Rivers Cuomo, I'm coming from... No. Uh, you can't all be that level of successful, but that's okay. Because most of us don't want to be. And even, the, even if you think maybe you do want to be, stop and think about it for a sec. Because <laughs> it ain't all glitz and glamour. The va- like people say to me, wouldn't it be great if you got a recording contract? If someone came from like a recording company, if Universal or, or Sony came to you and they're like, John's, we want to record you. We were going to give you a contract. Do you know how much money most people that are on record contracts are actually making from it? And look, money's not everything, but do you know how much additional stress there is when you're given a loan by a record company to make a record or to go on tour, and then you have to pay back a bunch of residuals to the record company? I'm telling you, speak to, speak to most artists out there. The problem is that the ones we see are the ultra success stories. They're the Taylor Swifts, they're the Pink, who just toured here in Australia. They're the Weezers. But look, even Weezer... We either had a run there where they were not successful and they were not doing great things, so it can happen to everyone. But yeah, be st- the way to stay motivated, again, to bring it back to the question, is to really clearly know what you're trying to do. Define your success and know what you're actually aiming for. That's my guide to that one. What's the next question? Um, it is, oh, <laughs> I like this one. What's your favorite band? chance <laughs> I do get asked this a lot and look it's changed over time it's um, it's evolved I've grown and I'm now at the point where there's not just one style of music there's not just one band that I like there's a whole bunch and I think it's actually not important but one of the cool things that's happened for me doing your music live doing my uh, weekly live music show where I play independent music is it's introduced me to a lot of different genres to types of music that perhaps I haven't listened to before and that's actually really cool uh, because it just gives me that diversity I, okay I know you just want to name Beth Tool freaking love Tool I was a massive Pearl Jam Nirvana Green Day Offspring fan Soundgarden Alice in Chains I was all about the grunge uh, Post grunge, a lot of Australian bands, Jebediah, Grinspoon, Silverchair, um, Spiderbait, they were kind of my jam. More recently, I'm getting more into more folky, kind of laid back stuff. I love Tim Minchin, I love the Whitlams, I love Ben Folds, basically everything that Ben Folds does. I like a bit of quirky and wacky stuff from the sidelines, like the Flaming Lips. Uh, in fact, Do You Realize was my wedding song from the Flaming Lips from their Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots album. Uh, and uh, love me some They Might Be Giants and some more classics kind of stuff like R.E.M. Not a big classic rock kind of guy. Your Led Zepps, your Pink Floyds, not really ever got into those. And uh, yeah, not a pop music guy. Uh, so yeah, that, that's it. Uh, rockin' and uh, softer rock as I age. <laughs> We are nearly finished up here. Uh, I hope you found this one a little bit interesting. You can hit the thumbs up if you're watching the video version. If you're listening to this on audio, you're missing all the beautiful scenery. You're missing the parklands of the east of Adelaide that I've been strolling around for the last uh, 20 odd minutes. So you can jump over to studiolifetoday.com to catch the video version uh, if you are listening on the audio version. Either way, thumbs up. Ratings, reviews, you know, the, you know the drill by now, all the things that you can do. Let's go out with our final question. And this is a really tough one. This is one that people have been debating and I'd love to get your view. If you, if you comment on one thing about this entire video, comment on this and that is, what is the greatest decade of music in the history of the world ever? And the answer is simple. It's the 1990s, baby. (laughs) Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to this one. As we say at the end of each and every video, podcast, and show around here, please. I'm getting all choked up because we have to leave. (laughs) Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. Keep creating. And I'll see you next time here on Studio Live today. See ya.